Come on, girls, get your bed. Good girl. Good girl. Let's edit some photos. What's up guys and welcome back. My name is Steven and I am a professional real estate photographer here in the East Texas area. And today we're gonna to be talking about the flambient technique, the reason you take the photos in the order that you do and what to do if it doesn't look right. So as you can see right here, we have a photo that was taken of the ambient shot. Now this is a common issue. Ambient usually will end up looking orange like this. It's nothing you're doing wrong. Uh, it's usually, it has to do with your transmitter on your camera that you have to your flash. It's reading for a daytime, which is what the flash pops off at. And it's not getting that, it's getting the orange nasty lights in the room. And you see even here in the middle part right here, I didn't even turn this light on uh, and it's still, was orange everywhere. So to fix that issue, this little eyedropper right here in Lightroom, click on that, try to find a white area. If you could see right here, it shows your display. Let's see, let's get it. Usually a good white will get you started in the right direction. So I want to look at my histogram right here and I want all the peaks to be kind of uh, right of center right here. And then the same with this, I'm gonna do my Full bump, which all it does is, you see everything jump right here? I'll reset it. Watch right here. It will do profile corrections. I have it where it's it's a, a preset that I made to where I set everything up and I got it the way I want it to look. And then now I just click it one time and it works every single time on every photo. Right of center. Right of center. Now you see all this orange and this blue and this green so let's go down here and let's look and see uh, how we can never be afraid of these sliders these sliders are your friends the yellow the orange which is what all those lights is doing uh the, the greens the aquas all this right here now watch it i'm gonna bring the green because there's green especially in the summertime when this photo was taken the green will be bouncing off the ground from the sun hitting it it will bounce into the windows it will be all over your walls so this is a good little tidbit to keep in mind and have it locked away because this happens a lot. Because if you want to look professional, you don't want like this image looks like. And even in the flash image, the image, the, the light bounced pretty clean. There's no shadow, real hard shadows anywhere, but there's still colors that we don't want in the photo. And so getting this where it looks the way we want will help us out in the long run. So let's take, now watch this right here, this area. I'll put it back to zero. See that? Right there, how it starts to just look like a shine instead of like a blue cast, and that's what we want. A natural shine is fine, but we want to not have the nasty color from outside because you don't want, you want your clients, the agents, to be so impressed and to make their clients, the buyers and sellers, to stop scrolling on your photos, which gets them more attention, which in return gets you more jobs. So let's, I, actually I want this a little bit brighter. I, I don't like the orange. I want the orange to stay a little bit because the orange is natural. Okay, when you walk into a room, yes, our, our eyes are the perfect cameras. They adjust, they, the color cast, you can look outside and adjust and then look back inside and, and it's so quick, you can't even tell that it's happening. But with photos, you have to be able to, to be a little uh, tedious with it and have some patience, okay. So what I'm looking for here when I'm looking at my Ambient layer, you can see I did a sixth of a second, uh, F6.3, ISO 400. So what I like to do on my flash shot is do what depends on how bright the lights are. Because what the F stop, I mean, what the shutter speed is doing is you're essentially shutting down with the shutter the ambient light so that your flash can be more prominent. You never, once you take the first ambient shot, you never touch your F stop again because you don't want your depth of field to be changing from photo to photo. So that depth of field will be 6.3 every single photo, everything from the spot that you focus on, which for me was right here on these pillows. That's a good medium spot where I can get some depth and I can also get some uh, shallow uh, parts of the image. 
Okay, that that looks pretty decent. I probably could bring up some shadows because I want I want the shadow detail. I don't want it to be over the top, but I want it to be a little shadow detail. So the orange, bring the orange down a little bit again. Let's see. Bring my blacks back down. Just let me bring the exposure down just a little bit. I'm trying to match up with my flash shot because my flash shot is what I want to base everything on. And you can even see in my flash, I have a little bit of green that is coming in the window and I don't want that. So that's going to be aqua and green and knock out a little bit of that blue. Just a little bit because the curtains are blue. You don't want to take all the natural stuff away because then it won't look like the agents know what these houses look like. And so when they see your photo, they want a perfect image. Whether it looks perfect or not, when you see it with your eyes, do your best in editing and they'll come back to you. Now this one right here, we can, so this is the window pool. What I did was aim my flash right here and made sure that I was at an angle that there was no hard shadows and there was no reflection of the flash. And that is why I take a whoops shot because you never know. Okay, so this right here, now I left the camera. You can see, one, 250, 7.1. One, 7.1. Now the reason I changed my depth of field of that is because I'm only tending to the windows. So it's not a big deal. You don't want to ever change it on your flash or your ambient shot. But in a window pool, if you have to, you can, but I would suggest changing ISO. I'm surprised I even did that. So that was a mistake on my end. But luckily on this, it doesn't really matter because I kept them in the two frames that I'm going to be using. So what I'm trying to do now, even though I left it at the exact same exposure, you can see that it still is a little different. So I just want to do a little stuff to make it as close as I can. It's not a big deal because I know that this was a perfect window pull. Been doing it for a while, but always, 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 always take your safety shot because it's very easy once you do your window pull, turn your flash off, pop it one more time, and then you have to take your safety shot that you can manipulate later. So if you have one photo selected, shift and click back as much as you want and it will have all of them. So edit in, very bottom, open as layer in Photoshop. And while this is loading, I suggest to make your life a lot easier, the link will be in the description, to get a tablet like this to where you can have a little pen and be able to, uh, it's a lot easier than with the mouse in my opinion, and doing it with a trackpad. So something easy, it's not really that expensive. Uh, also any link that I put down in the description, at no extra cost to you, their affiliate links, whether it's you sign up for Photoshop, uh, anything else I have down there that I have for my Amazon list, whether it's my camera equipment, the equipment I use for editing, you can click those and you can support the channel and it's no extra cost to you. So uh, that would be greatly appreciated. All right, so here we are, they are loaded up. I shoot in this order from ambient, flash, window pull, safety shot, highlight the top, shift click the bottom, edit, Auto align layers, I have it in the auto. Click enter, it'll take it a second. And you'll see it kind of shift on the edges. See how it shifted? Click this little eyeball, make it disappear, do the next one. Cause you wanna make sure that nothing's hopping crazy. I had a little bit of issue with this earlier and found out that for some reason Lightroom didn't auto correct the uh, lens issue which if you know anything about lenses, sometimes if you have a wide angle, it can make a bow a little bit. Well, Lightroom has an option to correct that, make it more straight. And it did it to all three except for one. And so it made it where it was all wobbly and weird. So I had to go back and re redo it and put it back into Photoshop. So always, always, always check. Because when you start painting in, things will not line up correctly. And then you'll just be like, what is going on? Why does my photo look ghosty? Now that we have all of these aligned, let's do this. So let's make the ambient layer a luminosity layer, okay? Go opacity, 50%. Now look what just happened. That was pretty quick, right? Okay. So I just had a serious issue that I had to kind of rewind and start recording again. And I realized, and this is very important because you'll probably end up doing this too and, figure, and can't figure out what's going on. So on my flash shot, I did not have the flash bright enough. And I'll show you what I just got frustrated about and how I fixed it. 
So this is very important because you, you will have these kinds of things where you're trying to edit and you're like, why in the world is it not working? I'm supposed to be able to put the blending mode as dark in and it's supposed to immediately show the outside and not mess up anything from the inside. But I'll show you what I did. So watch. After I did this little part right here, where I have 50% on that, okay? Then you take the window pull and you drag it up to the top, right? Like normal. If you've watched any of my other videos, which I'll put up here at the top. So let's see exactly what I did that was so frustrating. Now look, this looks like a decent window pull, right? Well, let's do what we normally do with window pulls. Alter option, mask, put the black mask on there, okay? Click brush. I put my blending mode in darken, which is supposed to work on a window pool. It just does. Now watch. Okay, now why, why am I being able to color outside of everything else? Let me show you. Command Z undoes that. So what I wanna do, if this happens to you, you're already in Photoshop, you don't wanna to have to try to figure it out, go back to Lightroom, exit out of this, re-upload it into Photoshop, it can get very, frustrating. So do a, a layer down here that will be, let's just say a curves layer. All right. So I'm pulling up this to be very bright. Okay. Make that go away. Now right click and do create clipping mask. Now what a clipping mask does is it takes the layer, the adjustment layer you just created and it, it affects directly only the layer directly below it. So now let's see if that solves the problem. Let's go back to our darken mode on our window pool. Click B. Oh my goodness. And now it's coloring in perfectly. I can do whatever I want anywhere. And it doesn't, well, it did right there, but. And it doesn't mess anything else up. It's just that my window pool was a little too dark and it needs to be super bright when you do the window pool. Very easy fix, boom, done. Right here, now do flatten image. See how good that looks? Command save. Brings it back over here into Lightroom. Look how good that looks. Go down here in our after edits, which for me, I do it. My after edit is my parallels because I was having issues with Photoshop getting confused and I would bring it from Lightroom into Photoshop if I did it beforehand, so I always do it after. I don't know why, they may have fixed it, but like right now, it's still not exactly perfect and I have to click update and then it does it. So there you go. Right there is our finished image. Easy. Didn't have to paint anything. So this is a very, if you're, if you're trying to do it fast, you can go into Photoshop and create an action. There's all kinds of good, helpful videos on YouTube where you can learn how to create an action and just follow the steps, create this action for this right here. Follow the steps on creating presets for Lightroom and your job, you can knock these out like that. I'm talking about a minute or less by going into Photoshop, clicking that, boom, 50%, boom, back into Lightroom and easy. Thanks guys, if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to leave me a comment if you have any questions or new techniques you're curious about. I will be glad to make a new video and answer any questions you may have. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. Thanks guys.